Hello everyone, I'm Psychotic, and that's also my screen name. Today we're going to be taking a look at Reputation. Even if you plan to roleplay a war with a specific faction later in the game, at some point, usually in the early game as it's much easier to do it then, you're going to want to be friendly with every faction that you can. Uh, in this video we're going to be covering the benefits of Reputation, how to gain it both passively and actively, and who it pays to be friendly with when building your empire. Uh, if you learn anything useful today, or if you have a good time, please don't be afraid to drop a like. If you're feeling friendly, maybe go ahead and subscribe. But either way, let's go ahead and get into it. So to start out with, we are here in... This is the save that I did for my How to Get a Solid Start video. Now, we are still in the Odysseus Vanguard that we picked up out here in uh, Faulty Logic. That's kind of what we want to do here. The problem is, our reputation in this save, because it is a fresh save from the Young Gun start, uh, with HOP, we do not have docking rights with these guys. So one of the major benefits of reputation is docking rights. You have to be at least negative 9 to dock with somebody's station. Like, scale plate, we can dock with. Even though we're negative, we can still dock with them. Terrans, we can't. The Patriarchy, we can't. Duke's Buccaneers is... They're special. You can't really work with them the way that we're going to work with some of these other factions. Um, because they're, they're part of a quest line for the Paranid. But, uh, and the ones that are negative 30, there's not usually anything you can do with. The Ka'ak and the Xenon are always going to be negative. There's, there's no way for you to make them friendly. The Yaki there is part of a Terran quest line that you can make them... Act, uh, positive and that's actually how you get the fastest ship in the game i had said that we have the pegasus which is the second fastest the morea comes from the yaki and there's a quest line that you can do to make them positive if you take the right options but we're not going to get into that this is about reputation so we're in hop space and we want to dock with their with their station but we can't which means our passive methods are not going to work and we're going to have to work on active but as far as these, so we have licenses for everybody. So if you look here, we're positive with these guys. So we have the basic module license, which means we can buy basic modules. We have the general use equipment, which means we can buy those, and the general use ship. That means basically we can buy anything that is considered civilian from Antigon and Argon in this particular case. We cannot, however, buy anything that is... Um, the Secret Service membership will help you gain reputation once you're over 10. It gives you credit for killing hostiles in their system. It's one of the active methods, but we're not going to worry about that right now. But the intermediate module license and military licenses allow you to buy the small and medium ships, and then you need to get to the hero status, which is 20 or better, to buy the large and extra large ships. So there's a reason that you want to get these... Oh, I'm sorry, it was the police license that I was talking about that gets you... Uh, access to killing enemies and then down here once you hit 20 you can also this is hugely expensive it's 10 million credits but when we seed satellites so that our trade ship can see what everybody has for sale currently at what current prices if you buy that trade license there you, you don't need satellites as long as you've discovered it as long as it's not in the fog on the map then that and it belongs to this faction in this particular case, Antigon, we would be able to communicate with them all the time. So you get to view all trade offers on stations belonging to the issuing faction, regardless of whether those stations are already known at the time of purchase or discovered later. If the license holder uh, holder's reputation falls, then you lose it, and you have to rebuy it if you get it back up. But that is very, very useful for trade empires. Um, but the main thing is you need docking rights, which you're going to get through reputation, negative nine or better. You can dock with them. Discounts, the higher your reputation, the cheaper you can buy things from them and the more they will pay you when you sell things to them. And blueprints, which are going to be huge. So um, you can build your own shipyard and your own stations, but you need blueprints for each module and you need blueprints for each thing that you're going to build. And if you want to build the quote-unquote perfect ships or min-max ships, if you don't want to go racially pure, then you want to mix and match parts. Like, I prefer holes from split, uh, small and medium engines from split, large uh, engines from... Well, actually, it depends. Combat, uh, small and medium engines from split, otherwise from Terran. 
Um, you want your, your shields to come from the Terrans, except for large and extra large when you want them to come from the Talati. You want your guns to come from the Argons, so you really need to have reputation with everybody to make the best of what you can make. Now, once you've gotten their reputation up and you've bought the blueprints, it doesn't matter if you go in the hole with them because you've got those blueprints permanently. You won't lose those, so your shipyard will be able to make the stuff for you. You won't have to buy it through them. But that is mid to late game. But for now, we're going to make it so that we can dock with these guys. So one of the first things that we're going to do is we are going to take, in our scout, we have a pilot that we assigned and some service crew. Uh, and we assigned him as, well, we assigned one as a pilot. We're going to move that to the Odysseus Vanguard because we cannot use, the, well, we can use the Vanguard for this, but it's going to be much more difficult than if we do it ourselves. So we're going to go ahead and unpause, and we're going to get up. We're going to let him pilot this because it doesn't have any orders, so it should just stay here. Now, our other ship does have orders, but it doesn't have a pilot, so it won't follow them. So we're going to shift D to get off. And we're going to take off, and we are going to head to this station. Now, I had mentioned early on that there are um, civilian enemies that show up that you can take out that will give you a, a small boost in rep. The higher your rep, the, the less boost it is. Uh, where we're at with these guys at negative 15, we'll likely get one reputation per kill. So we're gonna hang out here until one shows up. The first one usually does not take that long. It's usually under a minute. Civilian ship. There he is. That didn't take very long at all. So we shift E to highlight the nearest enemy, and then we're going to come down here and take him out. Being very, very careful not to accidentally hit the station. Split ask for mercy. Okay, oh, he actually dropped something for us, so we can use O to attract that. So he dropped a modular trigger for us, which is used for mods. Now you can hang out here until another one shows up, but it is completely RNG at this point. Sometimes it will take less than a minute. Sometimes it will take closer to 20. So your best bet is actually to find a place with two stations close, like we might actually move down here instead. So we're going to... whoops. Okay, that's the defense platform. Where did our mark go? Why is it not showing our mark on my HUD? Oh, there it is. It was just hard to see. So we're gonna go ahead and head over here. Because when you get to uh, radar range of a new station, they usually come out quite a bit faster. So we're actually gonna go to this trading station first, I think. We might actually, if these are close enough, we'll just go back and forth between the trading station and the shipyard. So, so we will get one to spawn faster coming here than we will by waiting at the other location. So we're just going to weave and wait for him. He'll show up. And you'll hear the ping, and then you hit Shift E to highlight him and go after him. There he is. Alright, now we're going to have to be careful with this one because he's fooling around near the docks. You don't want to get too close or you'll accidentally dock, but you also want to make sure that you're not going to hit the station again. Please have mercy. There we go. And he didn't drop anything. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and shift one and head back over to shipyard. the shipyard where we can get another one to show up. See, right now we're at negative 14. You can see it in the bottom right corner. That's from the first guy that we killed. The second one's going to take a second, but it'll show up as well. When they send you the thank you is when you get the rep boost. And we're basically just going to keep doing this. We're just going to keep sailing back and forth between these two until we get down to negative nine. It's not going to take super long uh, because, like I said, you're going to get... Oh, there's our thank you, which means now we're at negative 13. You can see it in the bottom right. We also got 500 credits. Not really worth it for the credits, but that's okay. So now we're, we're just going to hang out and wait for another new one to show up. 
and we're going to repeat this until we get down to negative 9. If, if you've been here more than a minute and one hasn't shown up, just go to a different station. It's the fastest way to do it. Be very vessel. careful not to blow up their security vessels. They will The whole thing will turn hostile if you do that. And there's some reputation. We're already up to plus 7 with Argon just from our uh, fill shortages ship that we did. And we will get into that more later for passive reputation gain. But for now, this has taken a little bit, so and we need to get all the way down to negative 9. So I will bring you back when we've hit negative 8. Well, when, we, when we've hit negative 10 or so, I will bring you back. That way we only have the last one to do. Okay, so that one's going to put us at negative 10 when it comes through. Shipyard. So we're going to head on back to the shipyard, and that should give us our last possible kill. And we are only about 16 minutes into this, so it's not going to take super long for this t to work for you. It goes pretty fast. You can see we're at negative 11, but we just killed one, so... Not necessary at all. So now we're at negative 10. So we just need one more to show up. And it shouldn't take us that long to get him. So you can see everything's still pink if we Dying try to dock. Denied. Docking is still denied. Once we kill this last one and drops to negative 9, it'll let us right in. And you really don't have to fly around. You can sit still. They'll still show up just as fast. I just get bored sitting there staring at nothing. So flying, weaving through this stuff just, I don't know, gives you something to do while you wait. You can look at some of the Atlas fancy ships out e. there. Atlas E. Those are nice. I absolutely adore those. They are the tankiest of the support ships. There he is. Right as soon as we got here. And there we go. So now as we head back to the, um, oh, what you call it, we will, uh, the shipyard, we should be getting our reputation up to nine, negative nine, which is going to allow us to dock. And there it is. Now it's blue. Docking granted. So we're going to go ahead and dock on our Odysseus here. And then dock with the Odysseus up here. And this is what I mean. We just opened up every HOP uh, station as a possible trade partner. And that's why I like docking computers. We don't have to play the little game. We're done. Okay. Stand up and teleport to the Vanguard. But yeah, so everybody, all of these are now blue. So everybody in the pink, all of these that we couldn't dock with are now potential trade partners. That is huge. That's going to save us a lot of time and potentially make us a lot of money. And now we can pause, go to our map, and we can sell off that other one. So that's going to give us another six and a half million. So at this point we have 9.6 million. So at this point I am going to introduce one of my other favorite tools. Uh, we are going to come over here and check out... Bloop. So this is a different site and I will, I will put the link in the, in the description below. But uh, this one allows you to check out trading ships, solid mining, and liquid mining ships for what you want in what series. So we're going to look at some solid mining ships for some passive generation. Now we can't get the Terran Miner right now. Uh, we can, however, get the Magpie Miner. So that one's a Talati. And then for trading ships, we're going to be looking at the Magpie as well. So that's something. Um... But yeah, we, we can't get the Terran, so we're going to skip that and go for the Talati. Um, 
So at that point, we need to head up to Talati Space. Did we already? We may have already cleared this. We did. We did. We did. So it is specifically saying that it wants that we just want the regular magpie. So that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and drop monitor one, so that we are back in the game, and we're going to look into Talati Wharf. And we are going to buy ships. So we are looking for a small magpie mineral. So we're going to... Whatever we can do that's not... That's going to be less than 100k. So we're only going with the 61 there. Uh, the thrusters, we'll go with the basic. The shield gen, we can actually go all the way up. Now with the guns with miners, it is very important to always, always get your mining drills. Uh, I suppose we could do the tier 2. For the software, the docking computer is not going to be super important because their pilot will dock just fine. Um, the flight assistant software is mandatory. The long range scanner is very important. You want to get the Mark II so that they can find stuff. They only need the basic scanner. They don't need to scan uh, other vehicles. And then the targeting ex expansion is needed for uh, targeting the ore. And then the trading software is needed for the sales. And then uh, for consumables, we're not going to worry about anything. For the crew, we want a full crew. And we are actually going to save this loadout as S Solid Miner. So that we don't have to bring it up every time that we buy them. Now, I like to do these in sets of five. So we're going to add it to the shopping list and come up here. And we're going to set it up to five. Now, they're a little shy on shield components. So it's going to take that a little bit of time. So we're going to go ahead and tell them to do that. And then we're going to set them up for passive... Uh, reputation gain. We've got the, the trader that's already doing that and we will eventually get more traders that are doing that but the trader, because we have him set up for um, fill shortages it's going to be rather random so he's going to take people that have a lot of stuff and sell it to people that don't have a lot of stuff, which is usually two different factions. So each one of his trades you should get two different hits for uh, reputation gain. However, in uh, you can't really control where he's going to buy and sell those. If you do, he won't get reputation and the trades won't be as good. It's, so we use these mining ships to do that. For instance, there's quite a bit of ore here. And we know that there's at least two graphene refineries, which are gas, unfortunately. Um, there's an ice refinery. There's an ore refinery. And there's probably more refineries. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take our ship... And we are going to have him dock here. So we're going to start guidance to this. So while those ships are being crafted and we're waiting on materials, we're going to go and start seeding satellites so that our boys know where to sell this stuff. And that's going to be very important for your passive gain. Now for your miners, we're only going to worry about the ore places, but f you really want to get as much as you can as far as... Uh, satellite seating goes for your traders so that they have access to as much up-to-date information as possible at the repair station is elsewhere now with your satellites you need to make sure to move around a little bit when you're placing them because if you look see how these three don't quite move with the grid like these three do so for these three i would just tell it to drop one right there for these three, you would tell it to drop one here, and then you're going to right-click and move your mouse forward, and then take it up, because otherwise it's not actually going to reach all three, because they're on a different plane, and the satellites actually cover an orb. But we'll get into that more here in just a moment. And let's see where our ships are. So they've only managed to make one. So what we're going to do is we are going to rename this, and names are going to be very important. So we are going to name this Rep Miner S, or, because that's what we're going to send him after. And we are going to put HOP so that we know whose space he's in if he gets destroyed. And then at this point, you can go into their orders, and we are going to set him up for local auto mine in for or whoops in holy vision confirm now we don't have to worry about him he's gonna he's gonna go and do his thing all right and we're done upgrading so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be lazy we have a pilot for this ship 
So we're just going to stand here and look out the front Greetings. while we let our ship do all the work for us. And I am usually on board for shenanigans like this. So let's see. I'm not sure if it'll be able to reach all three of these, but it might. So we're going to tell it to drop a satellite there. Whoops. We are going to have to remove that because that ship no longer exists. Okay. So we can drop a satellite here so that it covers the shipyard. They're not probably not going to buy anything as far as um, mining stuff goes. Now remember I was talking about how this is actually up in the air. So we're going to drop a satellite, turn our camera, grab this guy, and take him up. And you know that you can take him up when you see the lines going up from your, your stuff. Because if we come up straight like this again, those lines have disappeared. So now when that is placed, it should be able to hit all three of those. Maybe I may have. Okay, maybe not quite so high. Let's put it like there-ish. Because that one's kind of low, but those that one's mid and that one's high. So that should cover all three once it's placed. So the main ones, though, that we need to cover are these refineries. So we're going to go ahead and drop one about halfway between these two so we get the most coverage. And we can unpause now. So we have enough place that he's going to be rolling around doing his thing. It looks like... So these three are on the plane. This one is not. You can tell because it moves funny. But we don't really care because that uh, defense stuff doesn't usually buy things. So we're not, we're not going to worry about him over much. Um, we're not doing anything with snails, so we're not going to worry about that one either. However, the scanning array factory is going to give us business on our trader. And if we put this halfway between that and... The jump gate, we can see who is and isn't coming out of the jump gate. And then there's a weapon component factory here that we can also drop one in. Now there are some items that you can buy. If we were to look here, in here, there are some items that you can buy that are called resource probes. And they will show you the density of ores, which sounds like it would be necessary to seed things for. But in all honesty, your um, NPCs will scan and they scan accurately, and they scan the whole sector. So the only real reason to drop those buoys are either if you have a quest to do so, or if you need one for yourself. So we're not going to worry about those. As we have our handy dandy roguey map to tell us what is in what sector. Now one of my complaints about his map is he tells you the densities in the sectors, and I will tell you right now that that is not accurate. That is from his playthrough. And I'm sure that it was accurate when he posted it for his playthrough. But I have seen different shapes and sizes in almost every playthrough that I've done of and densities of ores. So that don't only use that to tell what is in a sector because that does not change. If it says ore, silicone, and helium, it will have ore, silicone, and helium. But the values that he put in there, the low, mid, high, those may or may not be the same for you. Because I have seen some of his high helium that is one of my lowest sectors for helium. And then one that one where he said it was mid and it was just off the friggin' charts. So that is going to be different from playthrough to playthrough. But you can use it to tell what is where. Oh, there's a nice little xenon floating around. Hopefully he doesn't fool with our miner. He might jump their miners instead, which would be ideal, because that's a large miner and it'll handle itself. So we will let him go ahead and fly around and drop his stuff, and I will bring you back when we have more magpies and uh, our satellites are seated. So you can check, once your satellites are down, whether or not their coverage area will cover what you want it to. And in this particular case, it hits all three. So we got both graphene refine and the refined goods. Now that that's up, we can see accurately. So, so he is only buying hydrogen and methane that we could possibly do. And we don't have any gas miners. Gas miners and solid miners are different. Um, miners need specific... Um, inventories carry specific things like we can put finished goods in the scout just like we can a trader but you cannot put ore in a trader or a normal inventory it can only go in solid inventory 
and gases can only go in liquid inventory. It's kind of a misnomer because it calls it a liquid miner, but it's actually a gas miner. So when you're building your stations, it's very important to note that as well, because you need all three types of storage, depending on what you're crafting at the station. You need solid for your ores, you need liquid for your um, gases, and then you need um, item storage for, for the finished goods. Okay, so the economy is taking quite a while, and rather than waiting hours for this to go, what we are going to do is we're going to save where we're at right now, and I'm going to load up another game that I'm only partially through, so that I can show you what I mean for passive reputation gain, because this is going to take forever, and I've already got one that's started rolling, but isn't completely finished yet. Like my main save, there's no point in loading that, because I'm completely up with everybody. So we're going to go ahead and load my boron start. Vanguard. Okay, so here we are in one of my other saves. So we are going to look at... Oh, wow. I've actually been making money pretty well. I was down to three million there for a while. So, I did more or less the same thing, except I obviously started up here because we are boron. Um, these guys, we started at plus five. And oh, borons are 12. So we've already gone up two with 12. We started at 10. Uh, Argon, we've gone up by four. And HOP, we are at 16 with them now, because we've had those miners camp there for a while. So, once you hit different stages, uh, for instance, when we hit 10 with HOP, we got a request to talk to their uh, promotion ceremony. So that's going to be where you go to their, their headquarters, which in the particular case of HOP is this guy, and you can tell who's the, who the headquarters is by this little guy in the top right on the icon. As you'll notice, if we look at a shipyard up here, it doesn't have one. But this one does. So that's where theirs is. And Hatikva is on their trade station, so that's where their person is. Yep, the Xenon are already moving in. Okay, so what we're doing for reputation here is I have actually made a small fleet of miners. And I'm not going to go super big into fleets on this. We're going to do a separate video for that later. But for now... Uh, we are in HOP space, so what we've done is if you have a bunch of people or a bunch of ships that you want doing the exact same behavior, you can take them and you can right click on another ship. Uh, let's see, we could, so we could right click here and mimic com uh, commander's behavior and then just pick a slot, doesn't matter where. Uh, once you've picked a slot, and then anybody that is mimicking is going to be there. And we will go into what these other options do at a different time. But uh, all of these guys will be following his behavior, which all that he's doing is like we set up the other miner. He is local auto mining or in Holy Vision. And then we've got the same thing going on for Argon Sector. So they are local mining or in Argon Prime because there are places here that can sell. And you can see I've got some satellites seated so that they can see wh what they need to take where. And we've got pretty good coverage here. I did not realize that one was up in the air when I placed it, but that's all right because it's a defense platform, so it doesn't really matter. But we've got pretty good coverage here, and we you can try to place them so that they cover as much as possible, as easily as possible. Like this particular one, this guy's raised, but he's still in the sphere, so we're not real worried about him. This one is actually up in the air. And then... You can see the placement of these is different for every save. We have different stuff in different spots, including concentrations of ore. So that's going to be important. But uh, so for this particular case, we have one for boron, one for uh, argon, and one for HOP to try to get our rep raised while we do other stuff. Um, Zyarth Patriarchy, we're at negative 15, so I need that to come up because I need to be able to trade with them for ships. But I had, we're going to use the same method here, and I'm not going to go through it again because we already went through it once, of ping-ponging between different bases to get uh, those criminals to shoot down until we get to negative 9. And at that point, I will bring up another fleet of five miners to run in Zyarth space. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to hop over and up a system, I believe. I think it's over one and up one before I can get ore that also has ZYA 
uh, faction on it. You can see there's actually no ore here. And if you don't have anything selected, you can show encyclopedia entry on a sector. And it'll tell you sunlight is 100%, and that is all that they have. But it will also tell you who governs it. And for piracy, we will go more into this later. Uh, but for right now, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, but Zyar P Patriarchy owns the sector. Not this way. Instead of the other way. And this is our player HQ, which allows you to do research. And I'm working on teleportation. So with teleportation, you don't have to walk from ship to ship or have them both docked at the same spot to move. Tier 1 teleportation allows you to teleport to another ship within the same sector. Uh, tier 2 allows you to, to do it between 1 to 3 sectors. Um, tier 2 is uh, up to 5, and Tier 3 is anywhere. Satellites for these guys. Now, one of the easiest ways, particularly in places that you know that you're going to be spending time, like here... There are two ways that you can get your scout to help you out with that. You can right click in an area and tell it to, oops, well it helps if you have the scout selected. So like, you can tell it to explore, which will give you a big old thing that covers the whole place. I don't like using this. Uh, it is good because they will go up and down as well as side to side on the plane. But if you use that, they will often, like, he'll move a little bit this way, and then a little bit back, and then a little bit up, and then way down over here. So he's covering the same ground multiple times. So what I like to do is I direct them to fly here and wait in a big old spiral pattern around the place from point to point. And you can kind of tell that it's here. So, and then at this point, you would move in a little bit further until they have the whole sector covered. And that's what I use my scouts for. Once the whole sector is covered, which we're gonna cancel all of this because this was just for demo. But so now he would fly that route, which would basically give us the pattern that we already have explored. Then when he hits here and he's finished, you go around and seed your satellites as efficiently as you can. So we are going to go ahead and remove all orders so that we don't have to worry about it. And he is here specifically to gain rep the way that we were showing for actively. Now, when you're gaining rep, another way to gain rep actively is to come to a station and look at missions that you can pick up from them. But you have to be very, very careful that you pay attention to whom they are against. Because if you pick up a mission, uh, for instance, if we look at our qu available quests. So because of our reputation with the Holy Order right now, we can take their war options. So if we take on this, all of those missions are going to be against Argon, which is going to drop our Argon reputation. We don't want that. All of these are going to be against the other Paranid from Holy Order to PAR, which are the purple people. So that's pink against purple. We don't want that either because we want stuff from them too. So I don't like to do missions to gain reputation. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you will be able to find some through here that are against pirates. Um, destroy criminal traffic. That one's probably safe. And that'll give you 51,000. This one's destroy mines. That one's probably safe. Uh, main competitor. Yeah, it doesn't say who it's against. So that one's probably entirely safe to do as well. So both of these are probably safe to run because they're not against anybody in, in particular. But you want to watch very closely if you're doing missions who they are up against because you don't want to wreck your reputation with other people. And you should also check your briefings for your rewards. Okay, so this one just money. Uh, because this is how you get some of those advanced pilot books that we were talking about to up your pilot levels. Now, if you are lower than minus 15 with somebody, you can tell because I'm in a scout here. And we know that we're negative 15 with ZYA. But if you're below negative 15, a scout will be considered hostile. And these guys will go red just from us being nearby. So what you would do in that case is you would leave and come back in a traitor because a traitor is considered a civilian ship and it's just going to stay pink for you. You're going to have to be careful when you select your um, enemies, though. You don't want to just shift E at that point. You want to make sure that it says criminal on the traffic before you shoot it down so you don't accidentally shoot down somebody that's part of their faction or you're going to hinder yourself instead of helping yourself. But that is how you would get around if you had somebody like, say, I had accidentally, uh, we're going for ZYA. Let's say that I accidentally blew one of them up in Argon space. 
that would drop me to negative 16. I wouldn't be able to sit here with my sh with my scout ship. I would have to come back in a trader to get that to go. If I did the split start, like I did in my uh, one of my other saves, I started out as the free families. So you start out, I think it's negative 18 with these guys, and I had to use that trick to get positive with them. But that is another option. Um, and then the, the passive way for me has always been the best because I can carry on and do whatever I like um, I can start start exploring, getting data vaults, stuff like that, um, running quests, finishing Hatikva out, because you need that finished for another thing. We finished the Heretics headquarters, or the Heretics and headquarters, we got that up and running. Uh, there's lots of other things that you can do while you wait for these guys to passively get you income out of them doing their thing. Now, uh, one thing to remember is if you look at prices here, silicone, silicon, is always going to sell for quite a bit more. It's 239 than ore. If we look at the ore refinery, we're looking at 83. So it seems like silicon would be the good deal there. Two things to remember are the miners mine silicon much slower, uh, unless they are higher tier pilots like three or four star, um, which mine are not. Uh, they shouldn't be this early in the game. And then uh, the other thing to remember is that the silicon refinery does not use as much silicon as the ore refineries use ore. So I actually had these guys start on silicon until we filled up the refinery. And then I had to take what was left all the way up to argon space to sell off and then switch them to ore so that they could keep up. And if you look, there's, there's more than one ore refinery around. There's one there and there's one up here. So that also gives you more leniency there. Oh, there's actually three or... Oh, no, that one's helium. So that's a thing to watch out for as well. Um, helium is worth a lot of money and is a fairly quick harvest, but you have the same problem of they will fill up very, very quickly. And we will get more into mining and trading and how to actually make money. We remember, we're using small miners, except we had to use medium to get uh, liquid because there is no small liquid miner. But we are using small miners because while we're making money slower, they're hitting it, it up more frequently. And, and when you get your passive rep, it is not about how much money exchange hands or how much goods exchange hands. It's about how many times exchanges are done. So it's very, very important to keep it small if you're after rep. And like when I get up to 20 with these guys, I will probably pull all five of those guys off and put them over here. And we will do the same thing over here because there should be some ore. Yep, they're sending a miner over right there. Xenon mining ship headed to the ore field over here. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover with our reputation here. Um, we, we've covered why reputation is important. We have covered how to get it passively, how to get it actively, and what things to watch out for when trying to get it. The upside is the more people that you have a higher reputation with, the more options you have for trading. I can trade with these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys. not these guys yet. So the more trade that you have open, the better prices that your people on fill shortages can get, and they will continue to get you money as well as passive income. And with the smaller ships for the faster reputation gains, it's not as much about the money, it's about the rep gains. But once you get to the point where you're interested in making money, then you upgrade to your medium ships and your large ships, then you already have really good pricing available because your reputation is high. So if you buy a full large ship full of something, it's going to cost you 10 to 15% less than it would have if your reputation was crap, or at least you can buy it because your reputation isn't that crap. So if you learned anything useful today, or if you had a good time, please don't be afraid to drop a like. If you're feeling friendly, maybe go ahead and subscribe. But either way, have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will catch you in the next one.